Hi, it's Dwyer. It's February 28th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, betting-wise, I had a bad beat yesterday in the Andre Durrell draw. Like PBC's score, Marcos Viejos, Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, uh, I'm puzzled by the scoring in that fight. I could have been playing with house money this Sunday morning. I'm not. So I'm a bit prickly. Right? I might be a little bit more blunt than intended in this video. So I understand the world disagrees with me on many things likely this video. Now as expected, Canelo beat Abney Yildirim. Right? Canelo was simply too much for him. Yildirim makes a big mistake. He allows a pocket to be formed. Right? If you stand in front of Canelo and you give Canelo an opportunity to hit you in the body, to actually land the punches he's throwing. If you're hoping to win based on sequencing, right, you hit him before he hits you, right, you're able to surprise him with some shots before he gets over your initial punch. You're stronger, more physical than Canelo in the pocket. When you're not, you're going to have problems, right? As longtime viewers here know, for many years, I've pointed out that the big secret to Canelo is that he's one of the hardest punchers in boxing. Right? This is a guy who hits hard. Think Anthony Joshua. He hits hard with both hands. Gifted puncher. Let's remember, he goes up to 175, and the guy who decides to be on his back foot in that fight was the champion at 175, a puncher himself, Kovalev. And, of course, Kovalev did not go the distance. Canelo has concussive power with both hands. But let's back up a bit. Right? You know, Canelo right now is a bubble. During the Yildirim fight, I had Twitter on. And I was looking at the comments. And people were talking about Canelo as if he were a god. Now, let me just say this. Understand, great fighters in history, most of them, have either lost matches, right? Carlos Monzon, before he hits the big screen, had lost some matches, right? Jack Dempsey lost some matches. Jack Johnson lost some matches. Joe Lewis lost some matches, right? They've either lost some matches or they've had matches that they could have lost on the scorecards, right? Roland Lestarza may have beaten Rocky Marciano the first time they fought. Castillo may have beaten Floyd Mayweather the first time they fought. Canelo's had many fights like this, by the way. Right? Revisit the Austin Trout fight. Revisit the Lara fight. Well, let me just say this. Even great fighters are mortal. You understand that in every fight, the opponent is one lucky punch away from winning the fight. You understand, in some fights, they could have been scored differently. Now, officially, Canelo has lost. And officially, Canelo has two ties. Right? Understand, he loses to Floyd Mayweather. There's a draw in a fight I admit I have not seen with Miguel Vasquez. You understand what Mayweather and Vasquez did well. 
angles, speed, defense, movement, timing. The great Ray Robinson famously said that rhythm is everything in boxing. You understand that Floyd Mayweather and Miguel Vasquez could go off rhythm, right? They're confusing you with expertise, but they're also confusing the daylights out of you with timing. In other words, you're wondering what the guy's going to do. Oh, here's Floyd with a lead straight right hand, right? No tell. He's not tapping you with the left before throwing that straight right hand, right? Miguel Vasquez his nickname was the puppet. He would have his hands like this. You wouldn't know what he was doing. Then suddenly, oh, here's a jab. It's off rhythm. It's accurate. It's busting up your lip. Those are the kind of fighters who can beat Canelo. We'll call it off road, right? Where the pocket is either a moving pocket where Canelo can't set up shop and get his own rhythm, or there's no pocket. The other guy is jumping around. He doesn't care if you're moving or not. He's not trying to keep you in a phone booth. Right? He's outside. He's way outside. He's not even prepared to set up a battlefield. He wants you guessing on the battlefield. Right? To rip off a title from Star Wars, he's a phantom menace. You're having problems finding him, but yet there's a war going on. Those are the kind of guys who can give Canelo problems off-road. Canelo's next fight, and it was announced on Twitter through the DAZN boxing feed. And DAZN, let's face it, is kicking butt lately. They've had some great fights on that service, right? The Zone's probably my favorite fight service. Well, let me say this. On the Zone, they announced that Canelo's next fight is against Billy Joe Saunders. Now, if that fight goes through, and understand, with Saunders, a southpaw, you always have to ask that question, right? If that fight goes through, Canelo's going to be up against an opponent who is much more of a problem than Yildora. Because Saunders, who I consider to be a savant, in other words, he is the guy who some people work hard to be elite. Other people are just born and they have an innate understanding of elite status in their profession. Think Joel Embiid, right? Where he has some gifts, he's tall and stuff like that. You don't get the feeling that he's driven like an Elijah one, right? There are games where the guy just doesn't show up at all while he's on the court. But then you see him and you think, my God, this guy can go left, this guy can go right. This guy can shoot shots from a high arc. This guy, when he wants, can play defense. You understand the talent is there. This is the inconsistent worker who at times is inspired, right? In politics. Let's, let's make this risky. In politics, there were times when I would read the tweets of Donald Trump, the deposed president of the United States, and I would cringe. I thought, what, what public leader could be this stupid? Right? Calling the coronavirus a China virus, for example. Right? But yet... This guy, who at times came across as an ignoramus, somehow passed opportunities on legislation. Somehow solved the 
funding problem for historically black colleges and universities. Wright somehow passed criminal sentencing reform. In other words, Trump, on his best days, did some great things. Right? More than 70 million people voted for him in his quest for re-election. He actually got more black votes than he did the first time around. Right? Think about it. You understood. This guy's awkward. This guy has rough edges. This guy's a problem at times. He's going to embarrass the office other times. But you also understood in his great moments, he was truly great. Right? That kind of inconsistency, that kind of talent, I consider Trump talented. Right? That kind of talent is the kind of talent Billy Joe Saunders has. You read some of his tweets and you're cringing. Chris Eubank one time criticized Saunders on Twitter. Saunders then came back with some joke about Eubanks' mother. I am not making this up. You thought, wow, does, does Saunders, who's still unbeaten as I make this video, does Saunders understand that he's an elite fighter, that he's a public figure, that he's not the class clown cracking jokes in the back of the classroom, that people actually read his tweets, people in other countries like me, that people actually think that this is a guy who could be king. This is a guy who has had some spectacular moments in the ring. We did not know who was going to win the Saunders-Andy Lee fight. We did not know who was going to win the Saunders-Chris Eubank Jr. fight. It was unclear whether Saunders would be able to win several of his fights, the David Lemieux fight. And Saunders came in the ring and at times looked completely dominant in each of those fights, had very credible world-class opponents looking completely overmatched. And as you saw the way Saunders did it, with angles, with speed, with defense, with movement, and with timing, you understood this guy's elite. Now Saunders, and it's a lefty thing, let me just say, my daughter's a lefty. I have a stepdaughter who's a lefty. Some of my best friends are lefties. Right? I voted in a presidential election for a lefty, Barack Obama. Lefties are a little bit different than righties. Right? You notice as you interact with them. It's hard to put your finger on it, but you notice the mood and how it's conveyed and stuff like that's a little bit different. Right? My mom tells me I used to be a lefty. Right? It's, it's a little bit different. But you also notice that they're quick learners. You also notice that just like dyslexics, another interesting group, Lefties tend to have an overview. They'll talk about things on a macro level. I know I'm getting touchy-feely here in a sports video. Hey, this is the thought process, right? That gets you wins betting-wise. Lefties seem to have the overview. They can talk to you about things from 30,000 feet down. Now, maybe Saunders is a little bit of a rascal between fights. Maybe Saunders is a bit of a rascal when preparing for fights. Like Canelo, Saunders has been busted for using substances that weren't allowed in preparing for fights, right? Let me just say bluntly here, I'm not sure if I believe Canelo's clenbuterol stories, right? I'm not sure if I believe Saunders' version of events on how he ended up with tainted material in his urine, right? I'm not saying Saunders isn't a little bit 
cut cornerish at times. But what I am saying is like Joel and B, you catch Saunders on the wrong night, like Chris Eubank did for the first half of their fight. And you won't have a chance. Because Canelo is a bubble right now, because the odds you got in some casinos for the Yildura fight were above 50 to 1 on a fighter who, quite frankly, was competitive in the division. Right? His fight against Durrell gets stopped on cuts. They go to the scorecard. It was unclear who was going to win. Right? Yildurum doesn't have that many losses on his record. He's very tough. He earned the nickname Mr. Robot. He broke down opponents. And then I see that the betting market was giving him less than a 2% chance of winning the fight. Right? I'm online and everyone's just blasé about Canelo beating this guy by stoppage in three rounds. Right? I mean, put it, put it this way. The one-two that Canelo drops Yildurim with, everyone feels that that's a blasé combination. Right? No. Canelo had taken apart Yildurim's body to the point where Yildurim Stop protecting himself from one-twos. What fight did Yildurim have where he gets hit and dropped off a combination like that? Right? The problem with being great like Canelo is we start to take for granted Canelo's greatness. He beat a world-class fighter here. So I'm expecting Canelo to be a huge favorite. A huge favorite. Against Saunders. In a fight where Canelo shouldn't be the favorite. Right? I'll be I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I certainly was last night in the Durrell fight. I'll be the casino's Huckleberry here. I think Billy Joe Saunders gives Canelo all he can handle. Understand, Saunders doesn't need a pocket. Canelo, it just depends on the lens through which you view Canelo. If you believe that Saunders can stay away from Canelo, avoid having Canelo find his body. If you take the body shots away from Canelo, force Canelo to actually walk through jabs and movement. Force Canelo to take several rounds to find you while you're winning those slow rounds. If you realize that Saunders doesn't have to knock Canelo down. He's a southpaw. He has a reach advantage. He has a size advantage. If he can just box Canelo from the outside, take advantage of the defensive lapses that will occur as Canelo gets out of his envelope and tries to run up to him. Force Canelo to reach just like he forced David Lemieux to reach. There is a scenario where Saunders could win this fight by several rounds. Turn Canelo into a smaller stalker. Turn him into Curtis Stevens. I want people to go back and look at the Andre Durrell, Curtis Stevens fight. Right? Stevens, huge puncher. Huge puncher. If you're in the pocket with him, he can knock anybody out. But a little bit smaller. Not that fast moving. So, Andre Durrell made the fight a non-event. He's on his back foot. He's pumping a jab. The whole point of the exercise is, hey, Stevens can't reach me. Now, Canelo does have ring coverage. Just be aware of it. So when Canelo lunges, you make him miss, you make him pay. Right? Canelo throws a leaping left hook. The way to defend that punch is not 
to be in position to be hit by a left hook before Canelo throws it. Right? You want to see Canelo's left hook ending a fight? Look at his Kovalev fight. It's a left hook, then it's a straight right hand. Right? Kovalev gets hit by the left hook is not the same. Canelo could have blown on him after the left hook and Kovalev would have hit the canvas. Right? Understand Saunders' level of talent is such that he has the positioning mapped out. I've looked at several Saunders fights. He has the positioning mapped out before things happen. Right? That's the level of talent. Movers think about things the rest of us don't. The direction of their movement what they're going to do in certain situations. I think Saunders is going to be a Waterloo. That's the place that tripped up Napoleon for Canelo, who's smaller like Napoleon, who rules the world, the boxing world at least, like Napoleon ruled the real world. Right? I like Billy Joe Saunders in that fight. I'll hedge the play with Canelo by stoppage. Let me just say this too. There's a fight people need to key on. I know all over the internet is the KO moment. Canelo gets the KO, we forget the rest of the fight. But if Amir Khan just understood who he was a little bit more, if he just valued and was satisfied with movement and winning, and not hurting an opponent, right? Amir Khan seems to think he can come in and finish off Danny Garcia, Canelo, you name it. If Amir Khan was just more mobile and thought, you know, I have a hand speed advantage, this guy can't handle my jab, my speed, me stepping to the side. Amir Khan, who on my scorecard was throwing a shutout, against Canelo before getting stopped. I'm not saying he won the fight. He obviously got stopped. Would have beaten Canelo. Understand, Canelo's giving away rounds at the beginning of that fight. But here's where I want the gamblers to be careful. Canelo is one of these Deontay Wilder type guys. You're watching a fight. You think to yourself, oh, Canelo did next to nothing in that round. And then somehow the judges are giving the round to Canelo. Maybe it's the power of personality. I still can't explain the scoring in the Austin Trout fight. And that was public scoring. In other words, after four rounds, they would say, here's how the judges have it. And you'd hear the scores and you'd think to yourself, what fight are they watching? You would think, well, is there something wrong with my TV transmission? How could I miss all the punches Canelo landed that round? Well, this Saunders-Canelo fight is going to be interesting because understand, if you're part of the powers that be in boxing, you understand that Canelo carries himself like a champion. He does things to connect with fans. He goes to Miami and he enters the ring to the Miami Vice theme. People in the crowd know it. Right? Fan, you know, he, he talks. And he talks in a way where he's an ambassador for the sport. You not only want to see future Canelo fights, you want to see future fights of other fighters. Right? You see him at a Ryan Garcia fight and you say, you know what, I don't know much about Garcia. But I know Canelo, and if Canelo's his friend, I'm going to watch more Ryan Garcia fights. Right? Canelo even shines a light into his corner, where you see Andy Ruiz give away the heavyweight title in the rematch to Anthony Joshua. Then you hear that Ruiz is now with Canelo's trainer, Eddie Reynoso. And you say, wow, you know what? Canelo is so good that his trainer must be good. I need to watch the next Andy Ruiz fight. So the powers that be understand a guy who's a great ambassador for the sport. So if these judges who 
have expense accounts, who have gotten <laughs> who have gotten room and board, who've gotten paid to be a judge for a fight, want to align their scorecards with the best interests of boxing. They might shade some close rounds, maybe some not so close rounds. Two, plug in the name, Saul Alvarez, Manny Pacquiao, Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, right? I still don't get the scoring of the Joshua Povetkin fight. I'm sorry, folks. Now, Saunders, everyone knows Saunders' deal. He's like Jimi Hendrix. Another Southpaw, by the way. Right? He's like Hendrix. You see him at his best and you understand, my God, this is an artist. My goodness, this is the way it's supposed to be. But then you see him in interviews and you ask yourself, well, does this guy even know that boxing fans are going to look at this interview? <laughs> does this guy even care about the well-being of other fighters in the sport? Doesn't this guy understand that his public persona isn't adding to the well-being of the sport, right? Politically minded judges may not score close rounds for Billy Joe Saunders. If you're like me and you feel that Saunders has the style, has the, what Ray Robinson calls the rhythm to beat Canelo, you need to be cautious of the scoring. Let's talk about another fighter who I think is going to give Canelo problems. This is an on-road fighter, we'll call it. This is a fighter who has his own problems, right? But he's unbeaten. And I'm sure he wants a pocket form against Saul Alvarez. He's prepared for a shootout. His name's David Benavides. This is the same David Benavides who has lost the title Tested positive for cocaine. Heart drug. You look at Benavides' size and you suspect that cocaine was his clenbuterol. Right? The substance Canelo took. You decide. Intentionally, inadvertently. Right? Maybe he got, <laughs> maybe a world-class fighter <laughs> trading for a fight, uh, bought some tainted meat, Whatever. But here's the problem. Canelo fought at Welter. He's now up to 168. Canelo has filled out. He's gained the weight. Right? Canelo has fought as high as 175. But you understand Canelo now is toward the upper end of his body. Right? He's filled out. He's matured. Well, you and I know, you have a whole group of fighters in boxing. Gilberto Ramirez comes to mind. Uh, who have starved themselves. Their weigh-in weight, not their night of the fight weight, but their weigh-in weight's a bit of an illusion. Right? I'm convinced that David Benavides only weighs 168 pounds. At his weigh-in. Right? He'll then gain a bunch of pounds. So let's say Canelo's real weight, when he's not starving himself, is 175. Right? I thought he had no body fat on him at 175 when he fought Kovalev. Well, I would put Benavides' real weight up in the 190s. This is a big man. You get the feeling if he let himself go, if he didn't watch his weight at all, he'd be up over 200. Now understand, like Canelo, Benavides has a boxing pedigree, has at least one sibling who's a professional fighter, right? Canelo has several siblings who are professional fighters. So understand, these guys have been in the game from early on. 
Understand these guys have understood the need to monitor weight from early on. So while the rest of us were in high school at lunchtime having Twinkies, having cupcakes, right? While we were in footlong saying, no, no, not the six inch, I want the 12 inch. These guys were thinking in terms of being a welterweight, being a super middleweight, right? Keeping their weights low. Well, understand, Benavides is going to view Canelo as a smaller man, regardless of Canelo's punch, right? Benavides, Canelo might be like, psychologically, George Foreman against Dwight Cowie. Both great fighters. But understand, as dangerous as the Camden buzzsaw was, and both guys in their career had belts. These are champions. But understand, as dangerous as Dwight Cowie was, George Foreman thought that he was the bigger man. Thought that he could take Cowie's punches. Now, Benavides is highly skilled. He gets you in the pocket, he finishes you. This is that fighter that wants Canelo to try to go to his body. Understand, in sparring, he sparred with the best. You have some world-class trainers. Abel Sanchez, who was recently as yesterday, in an interview with BoxingScene.com said, I feel that Benavides is too dangerous for Canelo. Right? Understand that Anthony Durrell, in the bet I lost yesterday, the Anthony Durrell draw, was fighting for the right to fight the winner of Benavides' next bout to be the mandatory at 168 pounds. Right? Benavides has been the champ at 168. The same division as Canelo. He doesn't have a belt right now, even though he's unbeaten. Because, of course, he failed a test or violated some rule. Right? So you're talking about a fighter's fighter here. A guy who has Abel Sanchez convinced. Let's remember, too. Abel Sanchez knows Canelo because Abel Sanchez used to be in the corner of Gennady Golovkin. Right? You might recall the first Golovkin fight. Golovkin comes out and treats Canelo like a little man. Golovkin runs up to Canelo repeatedly, has Canelo's back up on the ropes. Canelo decides to fight that fight off his back foot. Now, whether or not you believe Canelo deserved the draw in that fight, understand Canelo needed a second wind to make that fight competitive. Right? Sanchez has had a fighter get a draw against Canelo. This is the second draw Canelo had, right? The first is the Miguel Vasquez fight that I haven't seen, but I know Vasquez, right? Professionally, not personally, right? Is a angle, speed, movement, defense, timing guy, right? And so just to understand, you have those in the sport. Let me raise my hand here, who believes that if Canelo fights Benavides, right, because the way to beat both, in my opinion, involves a guy being away from the pocket, both of those guys who both view themselves as alpha would be fighting each other with the same fight style. Benavides is a murderous puncher. Murderous puncher, just like Canelo. The question, though, is whether Canelo could fight that fight style against a bigger guy. Right? Benavides, like Canelo, is two-handed. Right? When Canelo fought Kovalev, Kovalev made a decision early on with his trainer, Buddy McGirt, to box him from the outside. Benavides would not make that decision. This would be a situation of, hey, I've been at 168 for years. I'm big for the division. 
You're now at 168 for five minutes. Show me here in the pocket that you hit harder than I do. I'm here to trade. If Canelo is serious about unifying the title at 168, and I have no reason to question the seriousness of a guy who has fought, Lara, who's fought Mayweather, who's fought Golovkin twice, who's fought Kovalev, right? I have, who's fought an unbeaten Callum Smith. Hey, I don't question Canelo's seriousness. So if Canelo truly wants to unify the titles at 168, he's going to have to go through Hendricks, right? Billy Joe Saunders, movement. Turkey jerky awkwardness, timing awkwardness, right? Southpaw awkwardness, mobile pocket, if there's a pocket, right? I believe Saunders beats Lemieux in Canada. Look that one up, right? A guy who doesn't even care where he fights. By the way, the fight's May 8th, right? Right around Cinco de Mayo, very special day for Canelo. Right? Saunders is going to come in, and I believe Canelo is going to understand this is not Abney Yil Durham. This isn't a guy in the pocket willing to engage in a shootout with him. I think Canelo has problems in that fight. If Canelo gets by that fight, and if he decides to try to approach Mount Venavides, right, he's going to find a guy waiting there in the pocket for him. A guy who's bigger, a guy who might outweigh him by over 10 pounds on fight night. A guy who, like him, is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. A guy who's going to see him going for his body and is going to return fire. And Benavides has low power. Understand, Benavides KO'd my guy, Anthony Durrell. In their last fight, right? Durrell, <laughs> who himself is a puncher, Durrell thought he was winning the fight before the knockout. But let's just say we all understood that was a stoppage. So all I could say about Canelo is it gets harder from here. Great fighters challenge themselves. Ray Robinson, who I mentioned before, when he was in the midst of one of the best runs the sport has ever known, before his first retirement, in a, at a time when we didn't have super this and light this, he was the middleweight champ and he decided for his last fight, what he thought was going to be his last fight, that he was going to challenge the light heavyweight champ, Joey Maxim. And he did. And he was winning that fight before he got stopped by heat exhaustion. Right? Great fighters challenge themselves. This is who they are. Right? They just, they just need to see how high and how far they can go. Right? Late in his career, Ali, who was clearly fading, right? He's beaten by Leon Spinks when Leon Spinks had only had seven pro fights. Uh, Ali decided he needed to take on reigning heavyweight champion, unbeaten Larry Holmes, one of history's most underrated champions in my eyes. Right, Canelo, I believe, is a guy who needs to fight the very best. I get the feeling the people around him aren't going to tell him no. I thought he lost the first Golovkin fight. How does Canelo follow that up? By fighting Golovkin in a rematch. And of course in the rematch, Canelo decides he's going to be on his front foot. The two fights are different fights. Right? So I get the feeling, just the fact that Saunders is out there, just the fact that Benavides is out there, just, by the way, both unbeaten, unlike Canelo, both unbeaten. Just the fact that Canelo wants to be the best and is 
like Miguel Cotto before him, a mountain climber, right? You say to a mountain climber, why do you have to climb this mountain? They'll tell you, because it's there, right? I believe Canelo ultimately is going to run into these two guys. And when he does, he's going to find that the water is very deep, perhaps too deep for him. I like Saunders and Canelo's next fight. I expect Saunders to be the underdog, so I'm expecting to get great odds and I can hedge with Canelo by KO. I believe you need the hedge because Canelo is, to me, one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Right? The Benavidez fight.